yeah, I think I think ultimately psychedelics have the ability to completely allow you to retake back control of your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like take back control. It's like you probably never had control. It's really, if anything, it's to give you a true chance at taking control, but you need to do it after you're an adult. I really do believe that you need to become an adult, live life. I was 21 when I, when I did it. And I would say that's probably the earliest you should do it. And I'm not going to stop you if you do it at fucking 18 or whatever, but I think you should at least wait until you've like lived some life and done some shit. And some people have lived more life in 18 years than other people lived in 40. So, you know, the age isn't specifically the thing. It's more of a general average of like, you probably have, you know, if you go out on your own and you live in your own place or you have roommates or whatever like that, that's just getting out of your hometown, I think, is like kind of an essential part before you really dive into something like that. Because you kind of need to go on that journey and start realizing the things about life that yeah. then when you do it, it gives you perspective. But there's, I mean, you also need to have like with the stuff like for as for like things like integration, you mm-hmm. need to have the maturity to like be able to totally. handle it. Totally. And be able to like really in a mature way, look at what it is and like integrate it back into your life. Definitely. So no. I think that that's one of the things that Michael Pollan says. He says that so many psychedelics are kind of wasted on the young, whereas that, as like somebody who's in their 30s through like 60, they have these like the really deeply ingrained beliefs and assumptions, those deeply ingrained calcified thought patterns that just mm-hmm. get cracked and the foundation of them kind of blow apart <laughs> but but it's destabil like that scares people I who's like i've been living like this for 40 years and i don't want to change i've talked to people <laughs> about like doing psychedelic people that we work with and they're like mm-hmm. no man like i don't I, some and that's when i say i i do think that psychedelics aren't for everybody there are some people that you can't even the the string of sanity is not good to it's tug good. even yeah. a little bit yeah yeah like some for people, people are who unstable. are like <laughs> schizophrenics or like people yes. who have experienced like some kind of personality disorder psychosis totally probably not a good idea no not a good idea definitely not a good idea but yeah but if you're a mentally stable person who's just kind of like has fears and anxieties like everybody does it has this magical like you said way of dissolving that and totally yeah and i think i think ultimately the end result of a changed culture is going to need to be assisted partly by that. Yeah. Partly by even just cannabis legalization yeah. is going to be huge. And it's right? getting there. It's already getting there. Um, and, and so we have, that's one way of breaking down perceptions and barriers because weed does allow you to see things from a different perspective. And although I think that one's a little bit more easily abused versus some of these other psychedelics, I think are harder to abuse. Not that you can't, but I think they're harder to. Well, they're not really that addictive. They're not that addictive. Like the first thing, like when I came down from the mushroom trip, the first thing wasn't like, oh my God, when can I do this again? It was like, oh my God. Oh shit. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, I got to take in what I just did. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, there's like, there's a cool down period and there's definitely like, I find some of the best lessons I've learned are like months after the trip yeah but they're from the trip and they're inspired from them and it immediately makes me go back to a moment on the trip that i'm like oh shit this is what that was about you know and those are cool man those those are some of the coolest ones is when you really kind of like let it simmer yeah you have the trip you have some really profound things that happen in the trip and so that will be huge and that's kind of how you approach things moving forward then you approach with the the new strategy you do that for like a month or, or whatever and then you'll get inspired by some new stuff because you have this new perception. You have this now new way of approaching things. You literally can completely change your mind. You can completely you can. how to change complete, your mind. Yes, exactly. Michael Pollan titled it right because you can completely change your mind. It's it's not going to happen overnight, yeah. and it is a process that you have to begin and and just kind of like keep chipping away at. Totally. But like where I'm at now compared to where I was when I first started psychedelics, like it would have seemed overwhelming to think I'd get to this point. Yeah. But now and, uh, that I'm here, I'm like, yeah, no, this was the logical progression of how everything went. It makes sense that I went from this point to this point and that I had all these little blips all along the way, but they were all part of the process. And the only reason why I even got to where I'm at now is because of the small changes that happened at each stage that then accelerated my ability to learn and grow faster. Totally. And they're very empowering in that way, too. So, like, I think that... You are God. Okay. Right? I don't know if I go that The far. Alan Watts, like, you are I mean, God. And how silly would it be that, oh, my God, I'm God? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm uh, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you're like, fuck, I don't know anything. Yeah. Oh, true. my God. But you're also, you kind of are God. Like, yeah, but the truly are. enlightened person doesn't claim to be enlightened. They do realize that they actually don't know shit. Yes. But that 
is its own form of enlightenment of like accepting your ignorance and knowing when your knowledge of limitation yeah. uh, is is there. Yeah. Like you know what you, you know can't when be you certain don't know about enough. anything. The per, the guy yes. who's certain or the person who's certain going to be politically correct. <laughs> the person who's certain about it is not. That's there. No, I don't identify as a person. You're going to have to rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as an alien and a furry, and I expect you to call me that. Alien furry. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, alien furry. <laughs> <laughs>